One of them who was pained and is pained is Senator Eugene McCarthy of Minnesota. Now, if, uh, if we believe that the Constitution says about the responsibility of Congress to declare war, for example, to have the CIA at the direction of a president actually fomenting or carrying on a war in a country, if it were to do this, without any kind of congressional approval, I think would put some real strain uh, on the Constitution. Uh, it, it's interesting to note that uh, people from small countries, or Latin American countries, for example, uh, are always greatly concerned about our CIA because a, a secret agency of this kind in a relatively small country with a weak government can become the, the real force of government. And it did happen here. Guatemala City, the capital of a country where the rich are very rich, the poor very poor, and the politics all mixed up. The pendulum swung very far left with the election in 1950 of Colonel Jacobo Arbenz as president. He confiscated the lands of the wealthy and filled his government with communists. He became, in local and American eyes, a menace. So the American government, through the CIA, made an alliance with Arbenz's opposition, and as of that moment, he was doomed. An American who had been air attaché at our embassy there, named Fred Sherwood, tells how the plot began. Uh, several of us thought that perhaps we could stop this movement by organizing something in the form of vigilantes or night riders. For example, uh, there was a group that tried to uh, bring in some Puerto Rican and Cuban gangsters who made an offer, a package deal to speak, to, uh, to kill or assassinate any 12 communists within the country for $50,000. We, uh, many, we went around trying to raise money, but uh, we were only successful in raising a part of this, and so this did never came off. But this demonstrates the desperate situation that was, the country was in at that time. These men provided the, the know-how of organizing a successful revolution. We had, fortunately, two wonderful ambassadors in Guatemala that if any of the planes flying for the Liberation Army had been shot down, some of those pilots could have spoken Chinese. The most important pilot for the Liberation Army, however, spoke American. The Liberation Army was CIA-sponsored and directed, but it didn't have an easy time in its overthrow of the Arbenz regime. had bogged down when an American freebooter named Jerry Delarme strafed the city and blew up the government oil reserves. Delarme did that while flying a P-47 furnished by the United States. Now he flies his own Lodestar, owns his own charter service, and minds his own business. I've been flying uh, in Latin America for ever since 1939, off and on. I like it here. It's uh, easy living. Fiestas, and uh, not too much rushing, no rut. It's a nice place. The first problem I had with uh, communism down here started back in the time of Ca Colonel Castigarmas in Guatemala. That's when I started, I was contacted, and uh, from then on, that's about it. Two days after Delarm blew up the oil reserves, Arbenz resigned. However, his replacements hesitated to embrace Delarm's employers, so Delarm got back in his plane and blew up the main army powder magazine, which rather decided the question. The replacement for Colonel Arbenz was Carlos Castillo Armas, the entry backed by the USA. He arrived in the American ambassador's plane. Within about a month, there was little trace of the Marxist innovations of Colonel Arbenz. Mr. Bissell, Guatemala and what the United States and the CIA did there came within your tenure at the CIA. Do you regard Guatemala as a success? I do. Can you tell me a little more about it? Why you regard it as a success? 
Well, I'll give you first an answer that may be slightly bureaucratic in, it, in its tone, but that, uh, in the case of that operation, notably, as of other large operations, the whole policy-making machinery of the executive branch of the government was involved. By reason of its nature, the CIA had an assigned role, which was really in a major role in that operation. And I say it's a success because the assigned role was carried out in which an action was taken that went beyond the stab take on operations of this, covert operations, or, or, or overt for that matter, of this scope, draw narrow boundaries of policy around them and be absolutely sure that those boundaries will never be overstepped. The overstepping in the case of the Guatemala operation, the one case I'm aware of, mercifully turned out to be of, of little, of an organization commissioned to do a job, just an unqualified success. But I think the, the basic question with regard to Guatemala is whether or not the CIA carried this out on its own initiative, in which case it, it would be wholly improper. Secondly, the question of whether they carried it out with some kind of presidential direction, uh, which if they did would be subject to some question. There ought to be some kind of involvement and some kind of commitment on the part of the Congress to fully satisfy uh, uh, the, uh, the Constitution. There is more to this story. The sanitized Guatemalan regime of Castillo Armas lasted for two years and then he met his death in the presidential palace. The killer was a palace sentry who took his own life. Therefore, no... Guatemala's next president was Miguel Idigaras Fuentes, progressive and pro-American. He was plagued by communist guerrillas, but his downfall came from the right at the hands of his own defense minister.